Hello, welcome to the program. I am Min Sanhe with our group of foreign journalists. Welcome to the show. Great Hi. to be back. Hi, Right, as always, let's begin with some of the stories that caught your attention this week. We'll start with you, Don. Well, I was most interested in this rocket uh, that was tested at, uh, in uh, North Korea at the, at the missile launching site. Uh, leader Kim Jong-un ordered the test and he watched the test. Uh, to me, that was a significant step. Right. What about you, Fred? Uh, currently, I'm working on the, the sanctions by China to South Korea, the, the retaliation of the installation of the deployment of THAAD, the anti-missile, American anti-missile system in South Korea. Uh, it's pretty interesting, and we'll see how this will ch uh, change in the future. But so far, um, it seems that the retaliation will go on for some, some time. Right, they probably will. Uh, Frank, what about you? On Saturday, I went and, and did a story about the Pro Park demonstration that took place around downtown, marching around downtown. And uh, it was really interesting on a n number of points. One was that I was given my own detail of police to protect me from any potential uh, problems that might, I might have during the demonstration. It was suggested by an officer that I cover it from one of the rooftops and I declined and, and everything ended up uh, being all right and, and managed to produce a really interesting package about their perspective. Right, I see. Well, earlier this week, former President Pakane was summoned by prosecutors for questioning for her alleged role in a corruption and cronyism scandal that also paved the path to her impeachment on March 10th. We have details of this latest development, as well as the response from the public and the press. Nine days after former President Park Geun-hye left the presidential residence, she made her first public appearance in front of a private home. She quickly headed to the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office. The ousted president was grilled by prosecutors for 21 hours. While Park is facing 13 charges, including bribery, abuse of power, prosecutors are said to be focusing their efforts on proving that the former president had received bribes. This is because it carries the heavier sentence, among others, and could have the largest impact on what judicial action is taken. Global media organizations covered Park's appearance before the prosecutors in great detail. Reuters reported that Park could face more than 10 years in prison if convicted of bribery. China's Xinhua News offered a detailed look at Park's appearance as she headed to the prosecution. It also mentioned the heads of some conglomerates suspected of being involved in bribery. Japan's Mainichi Shimbun speculated that the former president will maintain the same stance and deny all charges against her. From the nation's top office, former President Park Geun-hye has seen a dramatic fall, now being questioned as a criminal suspect. All eyes will be on how the investigation into the ex-leader unfolds. Now, on March 10th, she was impeached. On the 15th, she received a summons. According to some here in Korea, they believe the summoning by the prosecutors was made in haste. How do you respond, Frank? Oh, I don't think so at all. I mean, 30 people have been indicted in this case and, and you know, astonishing widespread corruption has been uncovered in, in her uh, administration by a previous investigation. She's going to have to answer to that at some point. I'm not surprised. But maybe I'm playing devil's advocate, but isn't it better to maybe to, to wait that the election is over? Is there any danger that this uh, prosecution might somehow like pollute or disturb the debate, uh, election debate? Oh, well, I, I see your point, but she's not a candidate in the election. That's one thing. Another thing is, I don't think the prosecution should be swayed by political considerations at all and let the chips fall where they may. If it has some effect on the election, that's too bad. Uh, but, 
you need to let the legal system follow its own course and prosecutors to follow its, their own course. And I think what we've seen through the, in this scandal is that far too often the prosecutors are in, uh, influenced, overly influenced by political considerations. And, and I think that's something South Korea wants to move away from. Right, and Frank's thoughts are probably the thoughts of the majority of those here in Korea as well. And talking about the ability of prosecutors, the competence of prosecutors here in Korea is frequently mocked. Do you think this will be an opportunity for them to kind of enhance their image in the public? Definitely, I think they have to. Uh, their image is will pretty improve. damaged, so they have, and I think they understood that. Uh, I think the, the arrest of uh, Lee Jae-yong was a strong signal. I see. Just out of curiosity, what image do prosecutors in your country enjoy? You know, they can be pretty tough. Uh, they can uh, really dig up some good stuff. It depends on what kind of backing they have from the Justice Department. Uh, President Trump has just forced the resignations of about 46 prosecutors, including the very aggressive prosecutor uh, in New York, uh, the U.S. attorney in New York, who was really going after some big business in Wall Street and so forth. Uh, so it, it, we have to see how aggressive they will be, but they, but they can be pretty good. If they get the uh, goods on people, they can be pretty tough uh, when, they have the, when they have the opportunity. And I think they have kind of a high profile here too. Yes. I mean, there are some Korean dramas that oh, feature are, prosecutors. Yes. There's, there's quite a few of those. And that's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's as big a deal uh, in the West and you know, sitcoms and dramas and TV shows. I don't know that, that we feature prosecutors quite as often as, as here. Uh, Don, in response to charges against her, the former president has maintained that she sought no personal gain. Response from the public has been hostile, of course. How do you respond to a claim? Well, I, I don't think it's uh, altogether credible, you know. It depends on how you define personal gain. Personal gain might be defined as enhancing her power position or enhancing uh, her, the image of her administration and so forth. Uh, I don't think that she uh, was uh, receiving money herself for her own personal benefit. Uh, and I think it might be far-fetched to think that she was trying to set up, trying to prepare for her retirement. Uh, that, that I could be, could be prepared to admit, but certainly she was uh, trying to solidify her power position. And certainly, uh, there is the sense that uh, the uh, great uh, business organizations that Chebol had their reasons uh, uh, for wanting to donate to these foundations. They, they saw their own interests involved, uh, SK for instance, and, uh, and certainly uh, Samsung and so forth. I think she was trying to solidify her power position and trying to solidify the relationship between business and government, which is what's at stake here. Right. And speaking about Samsung, do you believe that the arrest of Samsung uh, Lee Jae-yong will influence the investigation against the former leader, Frank? Yeah, I do. I think it gives the, the prosecutors a, uh, maybe a little shot in the arm in terms of their uh, the, the aggressiveness with, with which they pursue this case. And, you know, I was, like many people, I think, maybe a little bit disappointed that it was released the first time and then the second arrest sort of held, held fast and, and he remains detained. And I think that's, that's kind of given more impetus to the inve investigation of, of Bach and Hay. Her testimony uh, plays into that case very much, you know. Uh, Aside from charges that might be made against her, she might have some testimony to give in his case. What did she say to him or to his representatives uh, that induced uh, Samsung to make these donations? What was in it for Samsung? I don't expect her to uh, 
point the finger directly at him, but I think that her testimony would be interesting. And, uh, and for that reason, uh, among others, uh, I think it was a good idea to, uh, to, to be bringing her before the prosecutors to see what she has to say, not only in cases involving her, but in cases involving so many others, notably Mr. Lee. Do you think this would be an opportunity for Korea to kind of sever the collusion between big businesses and political circles. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. And just to follow up on that point, there were something like 50 companies that gave money to these charities. There's many, many companies involved uh, in donating to these charities. So there might be some other evidence out there that, that hasn't been uncovered yet that could be quite damaging. <laughs> the relationship between the Chebel and the government goes very far back and is very deep and is very intertwined on many levels. Uh, I hope. Fred will pardon my French, tout ça change, tout c'est la même chose. Is that a relevant expression? That works here, yeah. Do it's I have correct. it correct? You have it correct. <laughs> we should all remember that the, the, the history of the very amazing economic development of Korea is deeply linked to the role of the Chebol. They, they, they really play a huge role in that. So the, the, the economic DNA of uh, South Korea, the, the Chebol are deeply uh, into that DNA. So it will be very difficult to change this uh, like closeness between Chibos and government. But I'm a bit optimistic. Okay. Uh, former President Park initially refused questioning by the special prosecution team. How do you suppose was she during her interrogation with the prose with prosecutors last Tuesday? Do you suppose she was sincere? I mean, she previously refused questioning of any kind. I think she made a mistake in refusing questioning of any kind. I think that uh, she would have been skillful enough at not uh, incriminating herself and at giving answers that she wanted to give, I think that she kind of displayed a high-handed, uh, almost arrogance, you know, in refusing to talk to the prosecutor and in refusing to appear before the Constitutional Court. And the Constitutional Court mentioned that in their right. verdict. That's they right. said this was one of the things that upset them and one of the reasons that backed up their verdict that she didn't answer. And she has, you know, gone through, I think, probably some pre-questioning, went through some pre-questioning with her lawyers to, to be prepared for the questions that they're going to ask her as well. But I think that she may have gotten some not great advice from some of her inner circle. Now, Choi Soon Shiel is not in her inner circle anymore because she's at the top of the list of those under investigation and, and indictment. Yeah, she is. Um, Fred, upon returning to her private residence on March 12th, she told a group of supporters through a spokesperson that soon the truth will be revealed. Do you suppose that she has within her some kind of information that will change the course of the investigation against her? I don't think so. I think if she had, she would definitely have used it. And I think this before using the post. Yeah, before, yeah, before being uh, impeached. And I think this, uh, this statement was some kind of a wink to her supporters. Like, I'm with you. Uh, thank you for supporting me. But I think there was no big calculation behind me. That would be a bit weird to use it after she's not a president anymore. Right. Um, the former leader, Frank, faces criminal charges at the moment. Do you see her returning to politics? I mean, she does have, she does appear to have a staunch support base here. I don't think she can return to politics. She's held the highest office uh, in the country. But, you know, a strange thing happened in, in the States with Richard Nixon. He, even after uh, he resigned and years later, he, he would appear, he, he did, did some interviews. He didn't have a real active role, but he did, did do some interviews and he continued to sort of be part of, uh, a little bit part of uh, American political life. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen with, with Park Geun-hye afterwards. She does have some supporters now. You know, I don't, I don't know how strong that support will be following a, a criminal uh, trial and investigation. There could be terrific sympathy for her uh, among her supporters and among others too. There's, there's good reason simply to feel sorry for her, having lost both her parents, uh, you know, in very tragic uh, events. So it'll be interesting to see whether she assumes the role of an elder statesman, as Nixon managed to do in the U.S., or whether she uh, simply retreats into her own small world. Uh, I don't think we quite know.
Only time will tell. Okay, um, former President Park is the fourth Korean leader to face um, criminal charges here. And also around the world, there have been other heads of state who also faced similar fates. We have details in this report. Former President Park Geun-hye was summoned by prosecutors as a criminal suspect, becoming the country's fourth ex-leader to be grilled in an investigation. The first former leader to be questioned was No Tae-woo in November 1995 on suspicions of bribery. A month later, in December 1995, ex-president Chun doo hwan was summoned by the prosecution as well. But right before he was to make his appearance, Chun announced he would not comply. Both Chun doo hwan and No tae were convicted of bribery and insurrection and received prison sentences and massive fines in April of 1997. Meanwhile, in 2009, ex-president No Mu Hyun was accused of accepting illicit funds from businessman Park Yeon Cha. Why are you talking about the money? There are more money. Now, please tell me about the money. There have been instances of former leaders being subject to criminal investigations in other countries as well. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton was probed for the so-called Lewinsky scandal. The investigation led to charges of obstruction of justice and perjury, and the House of Representatives voted to impeach the president. But he was later acquitted and managed to stay in office. Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi was indicted on charges of engaging in underage prostitution during his tenure in 2010. In 2013, two years after his retirement, he was sentenced to seven years in prison. Berlusconi Silvio, colpevole del reato agli ascritti, qualificato il fatto di cui a capo ha dell'imputazione come concussione per... In 1976, former Japanese Prime Minister Kakue Tanaka was sentenced to prison for accepting 500 million yen or 4.5 million US dollars in bribes from US aerospace company Lockheed Martin. All are equal before the law, and without exception, this rule of legal equality also extends to top leaders of every country, regardless of their status and power. Fred, my next questions are for you. Yeah. The French presidential election is in, on the horizon and a uh, previous frontrunner and former Prime Minister François Fillon is facing formal investigation uh, for apparently alleged diversion of public funds. Can you fill us in? Yeah, so uh, this is a very unusual election. I mean, everybody in France now is a bit freaked out by what's happening. Uh, François Fillon, so he's a deeply conservative uh, guy. He was a frontrunner in the election as you said. Uh, so he got involved in a lot of stories. It was one scandal after another. Every week there was something new. Uh, so he, uh, there is accusation that he gave fake job to his wife using public money. So basically paying her with public money, but she didn't do anything. She got a fake job at a public company. It was a newspaper, by the way. Uh, she was paid for one article, something like 200,000 euro. So uh, we all wow, we wish to, <laughs> we, we all dream to be paid like this. Uh, and then the last scandal was that uh, he received uh, one, 50,000 euro uh, suits free from uh, a generous uh, donor. So there is all this, this scandal one after another. And the thing is for him, he had uh, his policy, he advocated a very strict austerity policy and he had this image of Mr. Clean. He has this image of being totally not corrupt, totally above the usual uh, and the corruption world of politics and what this scandal showed like it was exactly like the others and maybe worse so his image took a deep dive and he's, he, in France in French election we have two rounds he probably won't even make to the second round I see so what are the prospects of the election then uh, so far the front runner is Emmanuel Macron which is a very young he's under 40 he's a very young um, he's a former ministry of economy and he's running without a party, which is very unusual for us. Usually we have two main parties, left and right, the Socialist Party and the Conservatives. And he says that he's in the center. And so far, it's, so that will be him. He's a front runner. And the second one is Marine Le Pen, a far right party, 
which is, um, is ba her base is growing up and she's becoming more and more popular. So people are very worried because if she becomes president... Uh, she, she wants uh, France to exit from the EU. L'Union Européenne, qui, je le précise, n'est pas l'Europe, est à rebours de l'histoire. Elle met la France en retard sur le monde. Yeah, she wants France to exit from the EU. She wants to, to, to stop using the European currency, the euro. I mean, many things could happen. She has a very racist, xenophobic platform too, so... Fred, I have a question about this. How would Macron uh, be able to work with a with government being an, an independent leader? That's exactly, that's a very good question. And that's what the two main parties are saying. Like, oh, you cannot be serious. This guy has no uh, party behind him. He, I think he will, the way we'll work, there, there is a lot of different parties in France, especially like center. So I think these people are already starting to rally him. So I think he will find a way to, uh, after we have uh, like parliamentary elections, and I think he will find a way to rally enough people and enough uh, small parties around him to build a coalition and, and rule. But that's a, that's a very good question, actually. Right, going back to the investigation of former heads of state, should these individuals be treated differently in the course of their investigation, or should they be treated just as ordinary um, suspects are? I think they should be treated as ordinary people on there. Okay. Uh, I don't see any reason why we should treat them, treat them differently. Prior to uh, former President Park Geun-hye's appearance at the prosecutor's office, there was a lot of talk on whether she would stand uh, in the photo line or not, which she, she did. What meaning does that hold, Frank? Well, I think that goes back to the questions of, of how you treat everybody. I, I've heard people comment about the amount of power a person has depend, is, is displayed by how aggressively the reporters badger them when they go through the photo line. And we saw what happened to Chase and Shill and the aides. They were almost assaulted in their, uh, in the West, we also call that a perp line, right? Perpetrator of a crime walking into, into a court or prosecutor's offices. And, it, it, and then when you saw E.J. Young, they were back behind the lines and there were just a few sort of, you know, pushing, pushing and shoving him a bit. And then, you know, you saw something else uh, with, with uh, former President Bach. And I think that those, uh, you know, differences should, should be changed to the degree that everybody is given a little bit more space and a little bit more respect. I felt really, the Chase and Shill and the aides were, were assaulted by the media when they, when they came in to, to answer questioning. Right, and she ended up going up, going up without a shoe, right? Um, how do you foresee, this would probably be the last question, but how do you foresee the future of the investigation against the former president? We'll start with you, Donald, a few words on this. Well, you know, I have to say that I think that she may be charged, uh, formally charged. Uh, now. What happens to her after that is hard to say. You have to go through indictment and then charge and then trial on the charge. And then it has to be decided whether or not she goes to prison or gets a suspended sentence or whatever. But I think that uh, she may be charged. I certainly think that uh, there are a lot of people who, who would like to see her charged. Now, whether, you know, whether there's really proof, adequate proof uh, of direct criminal uh, intent and involvement, uh, that, 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 that's, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I, I think the prosecution believes there is, they've said so, you know. Uh, let's see whether they can prove their case. But I think that we're gonna see a very dramatic uh, sequence of events here. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, her future may not be uh, too bright. Uh, Although, if she goes to prison, there are a lot of people who say she's a hero. She's, a, she's our hero. She's been unfairly charged, unfairly prosecuted, unfairly pilloried, and, that, uh, and she'll emerge from prison uh, as a hero to people. So we'll... we'll to her supporters. Very dramatic, yeah, to her supporters. Very dramatic period in, uh, in Korean history. Right. What about you, Fred? I mean, it's difficult to predict anything. I just hope she will be judged fairly, like uh, any, any citizen. I'm sure there will be a lot of political pressure, and I, I hope that will not interfere too much. I just hope, yeah, fair justice like for everybody. I, I want what she wants. I want the truth to be revealed, <laughs> you know? And I think given the, the degree of uh, sort of empowerment we've seen uh, by the prosecution so far, that, that it might be. See. Okay, then, before we wrap up, I know I told you that was the last question, but uh, we haven't seen you in a while, Fred. How do you assess today's discussion? Oh, that was really interesting. Uh, I learned a lot of things about uh, Nixon and uh, that I didn't know. It's very interesting. 
Right, and on that note, we end the program for this week. We hope to see you again next week. Thank you for watching.